pray. Righteous, holy King, sovereign, Lord, holy Lord, mighty, triumphant, victorious God, Heavenly Father, I come to you today acknowledging that there's only one way. There's only one way for each and every one of us to be saved. Christ is that way. I thank you for the convicting power of your Holy Spirit that through your word we come to realize that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Lord, I pray that every single life here, every one that is yet to realize and recognize you would have this moment of clarity and come to salvation in Christ alone here this morning. Lord, I ask you right now for that truth to be made manifest. For every single person struggling, for every person doubting, for every person arguing with you, for everyone who right now is going through any adversity, any hurtful circumstance, every single person going through their own pit, every single person, whatever we're going through, please God, please I ask you to empower them with the reality that only through Jesus Christ are we overcomers. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the power of our testament. So Lord, I pray right now for new strength. I pray for your grace and for your mercy. Help us. Help us understand that only through the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, any of us will ever know true freedom. And in that name that is above all other names we pray, in Jesus' name, Amen. What a blessing it is to live in this free land, in a free world where freedom rings, where we're free to gather, to worship, to celebrate, where we're free to live, live in pursuit of happiness, and free to run around with joy in our hearts. Home of the free, land of the brave, and of the quick. <laughs> Let freedom ring. What freedoms we have. There's freedom of the press. We've got Fox, MSNBC, CNN, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and even the Newberry Observer. We live in a world of free press, free information, a digital age, unprecedented accessibility to news, story. It's too bad most of the time it's bad news. Too bad most of the news kind of chokes at life and strangles us. Yet this morning, no matter what bad news you're bearing up under today, I am here to tell you that there is good news. Somebody say amen. amen. There is good news. I'm here to share with you this morning the greatest news that you will ever hear. And that greatest of all news that anyone will ever hear is that 1,984 years ago, a free man stood before his community. His name was John. They called him John the Baptist. And he announced for the very first time the best news that any human being, that any human ear will ever hear. For John would say on that day with two of his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of all the world. If you believe it, say amen. amen. And it was about a decade later. Another free man, his name was also John. He was on the Isle of Patmos and he would write, he would write bold words as only free men can write. And he would write of this great news that I share with you today saying that they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the power of their testimony. Are you ready to be overcomers, church, this morning? Yes. yes. Amen. Say it with me. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Say it with me. Jesus is the Lamb of God. I'll share with you the best news that you have ever heard this morning. And the best news that you will ever hear and the best news of all time. And that news is the Lamb's agenda for your freedom. Jesus Christ, He is the Lamb of God. We are told in the words of the prophets of the Old Testament centuries before his birth that he was to come to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of 
the yoke, to set free the oppressed, and to break every yoke of bondage. Friends, we live in an age of harsh bondage. People are bound. Perhaps you are bound this morning. Many, too many, far too many, are bound by their own fears and bound by the power of sin. Many people are bound by pornography and sexual immorality. Many are bound in addiction and alcoholism. Many are bound in dismay and anxiety. Many are bound in free, in fear and in confusion, past failures and past defeats. Why are so many people so bound up? Why, if Christ is the Lamb that brings freedom to all the world, why is there a spirit of bindingness upon so many? It is because the one who is opposed to you, the evil one who would stand against you, he realizes that it is not riches or power or fame or armies or gain that makes one powerful, but he who would stand against us realize that the most powerful person to walk planet Earth in any day is that man, is that woman, is that young person who has been set free by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, church, say amen. Amen. And then, most powerful person are those who have been freed from the land. And this is freedom. He is freedom. Christ is the freedom that is law, lifelong and everlasting. Freedom is the greatest news that you will ever hear of. Friends, it is a free man. It is a free man who stood before Pharaoh and said, let my people go. It is a free man who stood up and on the banks of the Jordan River and said, you do what you want to, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It is a free man who would say, free men who gather together and say, not bowing to a king or powers of this world, they survived the fiery furnace and found one in the flames walking with them said to be the Son of God. It is a free man, young David, who stood before the threats of Goliath and said, You come against me with a sword, with a spear, with a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty. And this is freedom. And this is the best news that you ever heard, church. Say amen. amen. It is free men who stand. And it is free men who speak the truth. It is free men who gathered together more recently and said, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal and endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is free men who later would go on to say, confronting the evils of slavery with malice towards none and charity towards all. But the greatest expression of freedom that has ever been voiced was 1,984 years when he hung on a tree, Christ, a free man, giving of his life freely to be the incarnate God, to pay for our sins and atonement for our shortcomings, to do for you and I what we could not accomplish for ourselves. He was freedom incarnate, freedom personified. And his voice proclaims for all to hear John chapter 8, verse 36. Read it out loud with me. For he who the Son sets free is free indeed. This is the greatest news of all time. The greatest news any human ear could ever hear. Listen to the words of this news as they're proclaimed by those who saw him, who lived life with him, who walked with him on this world. For Paul would write, Therefore, since there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ, because through Jesus Christ the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. This is freedom. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, of the freedom that the Lamb of God pays for on your behalf is that we are free from the sentence of eternal condemnation. What is this greatest news of all that I am trying to 
to share with you all this morning. This great news of God is that once you accept Jesus Christ's freedom, you will never be the same person ever again. We are crucified with Christ in the words of the Galatians. We are baptized with Christ in the promise to the Romans. You are seated with Christ in Ephesians, strengthened by Christ in the promises of Philippians, hidden in Christ in the words to the Colossians, and you are promised that you shall reign with Christ eternal in the promise of Revelations. And I say with me, how, how will this be? How is that to come? Say the three words of the day with me. Behold the Lamb, the Lamb of God that takes away all the sin of the world. This is the great news, the good news, the best news ever heard of the cross of Jesus Christ. He came upon that cross to engage us, to empower you, to give you the good news and to show you what real freedom is. John 3.16, read it out loud with me. For this is how God loved the world, that He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. For it is said in the words of Paul to the church at Galatia, for He hung on a tree, He became a curse for us all. This is the message of the cross. This is the freedom of the Lamb. No other symbol. No other symbol incorporates such passion. No other logo such promise. A simple symbol. A cross, two wooden sticks, a vertical and a horizontal. Successfully branding the message of eternal hope and everlasting glory. Of freedom for all humankind, for all eternity. Even the greatest ad men of Madison Avenue with their greatest of multi-million dollar budgets and ad campaigns could never reproduce the loyalty, the commitment, the multi-generational allegiance that the humble message of the cross of Jesus Christ still unites men and women with and sets free. It's the message of the freedom of the Lamb, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of all the world and your sin and mine. And it's not a freedom that is written down on pen and ink or guaranteed by a government or an oppressor or a civic official or by another human being. It is a freedom that is, that is written on the wood of the cross in the shed stained blood of our atonement. It is a freedom that is incarnate in the Spirit of God, in grace and truth that that cross represents. Horizontal axis from right to left reminds us that we live, that you live in community and in relationships. You live in family and you live in society. And the vertical axis reminds us that while we have all of these relational planes in our life, there is more than just the everyday struggle. There is that vertical axis of human word and God word above. That vertical axis that reminds us that you at the cross, you are connected to God. You are connected to His everlasting kingdom. You are, you are connected to His divine principles, to His spiritual trust, and to eternal life. Simply put, the horizontal and the vertical axis of the cross reminds us that there is redemption, but there is also relationships. There is holiness but there is also humility. Covenant, but lived out in community. Kingdom, but found as we are servants in our society. Righteousness, that is revealed as we are just with one another. Salvation and transformation. The promises of Holy Scripture, John 3, 16, that says that He would die for us. And Matthew 25, that commends us to go, to go into all the world. There is that orthodoxy that is knowing to do the right thing. And there is orthopraxy that is actually even more important. Living lives that in God power accomplish the God thing that needs to be done. There is faith 
But faith must also have action. There is sanctification, but it is discovered in service, like the cross that has the vertical and the horizontal axis. There is mission, but there is community. There is the love of God. There is the love of one another. There is the imagio Deo, and there is the life of Christ. There is conviction and compassion. New Jerusalem and Newberry, South Carolina. Somebody say amen. Amen. <coughs> Galatians 2.20 tells us of this cross saying, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ that lives in me. When you accept the freedom of the Lamb, then you will be changed. And you will never be that same person ever again. And all of your life will be new and true. Friends, say the three words of the day with me. Behold! The Lamb. Behold the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And that's the greatest news that you will ever hear. It is the Lamb's agenda of, of freedom. And He did it all for you. You are not defined by what you do for God. Our righteousness can only be called in Jesus' own words. Filthy rags. But you are already defined by what Christ has done for you. And that, friends, should be a hand-clapping moment. What does all this mean that I say? It's real simple. Once you know who Jesus is, then and only then will you ever come to understand who you genuinely are. You are not defined by what you do, your work, your career. You are not defined by your Facebook account or your Twitter account or how many friends you have on Facebook or, or uh, uh, Instagram or some of these things. You're not defined by your letterhead or your job description. You're not defined by your past or your past failures. Don't let these things define you. Your complacency today will become your captivity in tomorrow. You are not, you are what you tolerate. But it is Christ who defines you. Who are we, church? We are. We are. It's the issue of it's the issue of identity and clarity. We, are we just are we just a collection of another social institution? Are we just offering another religious narrative to a competing marketplace of competing ideas? Are we no more than just one more feel good apparatus amongst many other feel good apparatuses of our days? Are we no more than an antiquated collection of irrelevant social values that are no longer applicable in a Facebook iPad age? When you embrace the freedom of the Lamb, when you give yourself to Jesus Christ, and only then, when you realize who Jesus is, will you understand who you genuinely are. Here is the greatest news that you will ever hear. You are none of those things. We are not Google or Ford. We are not a great, uh, great uh, stock-traded multinational conglomerate. We are the church of Jesus Christ. His body is alive in this world that He set of His own self. The gates of hell shall never, shall never overcome us. Here is the best news that you have ever heard. You are, you are the light of the world, a city on a hill, a people of the Word. You are the salt and the light of the earth. You are disciples and witnesses, followers of Christ. When you know who Jesus is, then and only then will you discover who you genuinely are. You are preachers and teachers and prophets and evangelists. You're children of the cross. You're the fruit of the empty tomb. You're the products of the upper room. We are the redeemed of the Lord, the sheep of His pastor, the forgiven his favor, His chosen, His worshipers. We are history makers. We are those who have been set free by the blood of the Lamb. We are those, we are those who have overcome by the power of His blood and the word of our testimony. We are the recipients of the greatest news of all. His children called by name, born from above, not to fail, but to live life and to live life abundantly and to overcome everything that comes before us. Friends, who are we? We are the church of Jesus Christ 
And the Lord Himself says that the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. Oh, Amen. Amen. Say the three words with me. Behold the Lamb. When you see Him, you will know it's true. <coughs> there are two types of people here today. There are types of people. Number one, those who have overcome great adversity in your life. You've already become an overcomer. You, have, you know what it is to live forward and to live through and to get on the other side. You, there are two types of people here today. Those who are overcomers, and there's a second type. And there are those who haven't had to overcome anything yet. But you will. There will be your day. And here is the greatest news that you will ever hear. Because Jesus is the Lamb of God. Once you recognize Him in your life, He will equip you with His spiritual power to overcome all that will ever come your way. When you finally surrender yourself to the Lamb of God, you join, you join, you join and you become a bona fide card-carrying member of the no weapon form shall come against me. Greater is he that is in me than in the world. If God is for us, who can be against us? The battle is mine, says the Lord. Overcomers Club, are you in the club today? Yes. Amen. Yes. This is the best news that you will ever hear. Sometimes you will have to go through to get to the other side. Joseph, chosen of God, had to go through the prison and the pit to get to the palace. The Israelites, chosen of God, had to go through slavery and the sea and the wilderness to get to the promised land. Jesus, the Son of God, had to go through Gethsemane and Golgotha and the tomb to get to the resurrection. It's the greatest news that we will ever hear that those who are freed by the Lamb, they are those who overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the power of their testament. Or as Paul wrote in Romans verse 37, we'll all read this out loud, please. In all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. What is, this, what is this great news? What is this great news of which we speak? No matter what comes your way, when you live in Christ, Christ lives in you, and Christ always overcomes. Do I get an amen? Amen. amen. Light always is victorious over the darkness. Every oppressor has its overcome. Pharaoh, pressing, had Moses overcoming. Goliath had David, Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel, Herod, Jesus. For every devil that will ever rise up against you, there is a mightier God that is alive within you. And friends, you will overcome the cause of the victory of the Lamb. Samuel Rodriguez is the overseer of the largest Hispanic uh, church union in the continental United States. He's overseer of, uh, it's called the National Hispanic Association. He oversees more than 40,000 individual congregations. He writes of these things talking about his father, his youth, his childhood in Pennsylvania, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, his father who was a steel worker in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. He says of his stoic, Calvinistic father, he said, um, this is his father happy. And this is his father sad. But he loved his father. He said he remembers the first day his father took him to public school. And he was getting ready to run into school and dad says, no, wait a minute, before you go in the building, there's one more thing I want to do. 
And I'll probably tell this story three or four times by the end of the year because I want every family with young children to hear this story. I want you to be overcomers. He said, there's one more thing that I'm going to do before you go into school today, first day of school. He said, young man, and he put his hands on his son's shoulder right there in the car, and he said, Heavenly Father, apply the blood of Jesus to my son. Protect him from everything that is evil so that he can accomplish your purpose in his life. And he said, every day, Father took him to school, said that prayer. 16th birthday, Father, the steel worker. It's 1984. Dad gets... Samuel Rodriguez, his first car, birthday present. Oh, everybody's dream car back then. Z28 Camaro, metallic blue, <laughs> black naga hide seats, eagle racing white letter tires on mag wheels. Samuel Rodriguez wrote when he got that car, he put so much armor all on the seats you could slide through one door and ride out the other. <laughs> it was every American boy's dream car. Oh, my dad, dad says, Samuel, Samuel, come here. Yes, Dad. Oh, thank you, Dad. It's what a birthday present. I just appreciate it so much. I can't imagine what the insurance is or the sacrifice you've made. Oh, Dad, you're not going to let me drive the car, are you? He said, that's right. You can drive the car after school, but as long as I'm able, I'm driving you to school every morning. It's high school, 7.45 in the morning, day after his birthday. Samuel's kind of, I couldn't drove that car, Dad. Why'd you let me drive that car? And he drives, pulls up to school. He says, wait a minute, before you go in school, one more thing I want to do before you go. Well, what is it? He says, Heavenly Father, apply the blood to my son's life. Protect him from everything that is evil so that he might accomplish your purpose in this life. Now, on the school. Samuel Rodriguez will write of these days growing up that he, he said, I haven't drunk the Kool-Aid yet. He hadn't come to faith. He was still skeptic. He still, he still saw, you know, a, a deceit around every corner and was critical of everything that was spiritual. Adolescent, you know, an adolescent kind of rebellion. And, and he, he won a scholarship to Penn State University where he studied mathematics. And he went to Penn State as a young man a few years later. And it was in a physics course where the physics teacher with, with great billboard, uh, bulletin boards full of numbers uh, demonstrated in the language of physics that you and I were not here by accident. That, that, that existence cannot be explained by accident. That there is just uh, far too many trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions more um, uh, uh, percentage against anything being accidental in some language of physics. And, and Samuel being a mathematician, he understood that. And he said in that moment, a light came on for him. And he realized, he realized that it wasn't an accident. That God was real. And that everything he had heard from his parents and his grandparents about this love of Jesus and, and atonement of Christ for him. And he said in that moment, not at a revival, not at a church meeting, not at a seminar, but in that mathematics class was the moment that he came to faith. He graduated and went on with life. He became the overseer of his entire denomination. He was called to Washington, D.C. to meet with the president. I'm going to speak about him, uh, race relations, in effect, and, and, and religious relations. And, and he, he is dropped off at the Speaker of the Senate, the, the President of the Senate's office, uh, the, uh, the, the Majority Leader of the Senate's office. And he's sitting in the office there in the Capitol building. And the Majority Leader walks in and says, Reverend, can, can I get anything for you? I'd like a Coke. I'll get you a coat. The majority leader leaves the office and goes and brings him a coat. He's looking around. He can see the great Washington, the, the, the D.C., look through the windows. He re how did I get here? He's thinking, how did I get here? How did this happen? And he said at that moment he had a personal revelation. He realized he had gotten there because of a family and because of a father and because of a church community and witness and testimony because of a prayer prayed by people of faith daily, regularly. Heavenly Father, apply the blood. Protect from evil. Let him accomplish the purpose you have for his life. He said he went back after that and, and his first son, first son going to his first day of school. They drive up and take him off. People are running in, got their note cards, how many vaccinations, how many doctor's reports proof of this and proof of that. And he walks in. 
Well, Dad, I'll see. Is there anything else? I'll, I'll see, Dad. I'll see you after school. And he starts to walk away and he catches himself. And he says, no, one more thing. And he called his son by name and he said, Heavenly Father, apply the flood to my son's life. Protect him from everything that's evil that he might accomplish your purpose in his life. They overcome. You overcome. Be overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the power of your testimony. Say it with me. Behold the freedom of the Lamb.